Pode a boca. Uh, Shalom and welcome to another installment of the Apostle GMS giving all praise to you. How about Shai? Uh, today's topic, as you can see um, on the video, is uh, the Day of Atonement and other topics. So we're just going to go right into the Day of Atonement. Maybe we'll go into a couple other holidays and then we'll, you know, go what, what the Spirit gives us. Come. This is the book of uh, Leviticus, chapter 23. And uh, verse 23, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, speak unto the children of Israel, saying, in the seventh month, okay, uh, this is the book of Leviticus, chapter 23, verse 1. It says, and Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, concerning the feasts of the Lord, what you shall proclaim to be holy convocations, even these are my feasts. All right. So basically going into the uh, the Sabbaths and the high holy high holy days. And the word uh, convocation, con is with. Vocation is to call, like for a gathering, with the gathering, with the calling. And there were certain days uh, out of the year that, you know, the Lord would uh, have the men congregate uh, to uh, celebrate certain high holy days. Which was which was three main high holy days that the Lord um, required the males to come to Jerusalem, but the other ones you would keep, you know, within you know where, wherever you were. Yeah, I'll get the scripture <clears throat> for you. Con was that Deuteronomy sixteen? Con. Yeah, because you brothers, man, you're supposed to know. See, that's what separates the learned from the unlearned. You know, we were talking off camera. A lot of guys, man who claim the Israelites, they wear them fancy garments. And they, but when you, when you scrutinize them, they really, they really don't know what they're supposed to know. Uh, uh, Deuteronomy 16 and 16, it says, three times, three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the Lord thy power in the place where he shall choose, in the feast of unleavened bread and in the feast of weeks, and in the Feast of Tabernacles, and they shall not appear before the Lord empty. That's it. Yeah, con. <clears throat> because basically that, that, was, that was a requirement that the Lord wanted. You know, he, there, there's, when the Lord gave the laws to Moses, there's certain specific things that the Lord wants, wants, wanted done and how he wanted them done. All right, this is uh, back in Leviticus 23 and, Lord. and 3. It says, six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest and holy convocation. You shall do no work therein. It is a Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. <laughs> Excuse me. That's why we keep the Sabbath days to this day. All right. And the Sabbath days does, does not come in Friday sundown to Saturday sundown unless, according to the new moon, that particular month, it falls in that uh, um in that stead, so to speak. All right. The the uh the uh Sabbaths fall according to the new moons. The new moon sets the precedence or the beginning of the month, which is the actual Sabbath, and then from that point on, that's what sets the rest of the Sabbath. Yeah, because did Moses have a wall calendar like you have? Oh, let me check the wall calendar. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's a Sabbath, a Friday sundown. They didn't have that back then, man. They were out into the, they were out in the wilderness. Mo, Mo, Moses didn't have no wall calendar, man. So how do you know when the sab these are all the high holy days? So how do you know when the Sabbath comes in? The Sabbath comes in based upon the new moon. All the high holy days are based upon the new the new moon. So you guys that are teaching Friday sundown and Saturday sundown, you're going off. Yeah, and that's that's why you had men that were watchers, you know. They were what there, there was different watches that you had to watch to watch for the enemies. You also had those that watch the, the the signs in the heavens, you know, and the the moons to to know, you know, what days, you know, we were to keep the uh, high holy days. Uh, this is the book of First Chronicles, twelve and thirty-two. It says, "And of the children of Issachar, 
which were men that had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. The heads of them were 200 and all their brethren were at their commandment. So you had a certain amount of men that had understanding of the times. And how did they have the understanding of the times? Because they were able to look up into the heavens and read the stars and, and or read the certain eclipses and all of that and know what was coming in and what wasn't. And they were doing it in righteousness. You could do it in wickedness, but they were doing it in righteousness. You know, so you had to have those men to, to watch, you know, because as Apostle Tar said, we didn't have no, no uh, war calendars back then, you know. And, and the thing is, in this society, you know, we're, we're under the, the rulership of the, of the uh, revival of the Roman Empire. So we have to go by their, their calendar uh, for now. But we keep our calendar within, within that. All right. Uh, Leviticus 23 and 4. It says, these are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocations, which you shall proclaim in their seasons. And a holy convocation and a, a feast, you know, when you had a feast, you know, the feast, you know, you had you had food, you had wine, you know, you had uh, dancing, you know, but it was it was uh, uh, the, the songs they were singing were actual psalms from the scriptures, you know, hymns and songs from the scriptures. It wasn't the, this bullshit that you have going on right now, you know. Because because when you when you you know you have these guys that keep the Passover and they have these feasts, you know, they have guys rapping and singing. They weren't doing that in the ancient world. You know, that that right there, what they're doing in this and those Passovers, that's called chambering, that's called rioting. That's what the nations were doing. You know, they would get together and just have these wild feasts, you know, and people singing and, and, and rapping and all that. Oh, to Bacchus. Yeah, Bacchus, yep, Dionysus. Yeah. Yeah, like in Trinidad, they got something they call Bacchanal. Bacchanal. That's like a feast. You know, your Trinidadian brothers, they, they would definitely know. Yep. That's worshiping Bacchus. Really what them guys are doing, that rap stuff and that aren't, that, they're really worshiping Bacchus. They ain't worshiping Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. You know, they're they fooling themselves, man. You got it, bro. Khan, so going back to Leviticus 23 and 4. It says, these are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocations, which you shall proclaim in their seasons. Why? Because everything is done at a certain set time. You know, you had seasons, you had days, you had years, you had months, you know. You had minutes, you had seconds, and everything was set up that way to calculate times. You know? It says, um, in the 14th day of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. So when the 14th day came in, that was the Passover which was also the feast of unleavened bread because the beginning or the the uh, beginning or the 14th day at evening is the beginning of the 15th day which is the the uh uh feast of unleavened bread which on the night of the passover you didn't eat uh, leavened bread it says um it says and on the 15th day of the same month is the feast of unleavened bread which is the same day it says unto unto the lord Seven days you must eat unleavened bread. In the first day you shall have an holy convocation. You shall do no serve our work therein, but you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord seven days. In the seventh day is an holy convocation. You shall do no serve our work therein. So the first day is a Sabbath, which is an actual Sabbath, which is the 15th day of the month. And then seven days later, which would actually be the 20th day, that would be a Sabbath. And then the next day, you have the regular Sabbath, which comes in on the 21st. So you had you had Sabbaths within Sabbaths, you know, but then you had the regular or weekly Sabbath. Not the moonly Sabbath. <laughs> the inside joke. Uh, it says, um, it says, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, When you become into the land which I give unto you. And shall reap the harvest thereof then you shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest and this is one of those days that you kept <clears throat> as far as um the feast of first fruits that was one of the days that you would keep uh to the lord which which um which they call today the Pe pentecost you know in the new testament it's called pentecost but it's really the feast of first fruits because what would happen is you would have the passover and then the last Sabbath of the Passover, when that Sabbath was done, then you began to count. You know, you began to count for the 50 days. And at the end of the 50 days, you would keep the, la the last day, which was the Sabbath. 
which they called the, the Feast of Pentecost, which really was the Feast of First Fruits or the Feast of Ingathering. Yeah, because uh, the, the first of the flock, uh, be it uh, of the flock or of uh, vegetation, fruits and whatnot, they all belong to the Heavenly Father. Right. In other words, he takes his cut from off the top. And the, the, the members of the elect, they're like a first fruits. Because yep. I got the scripture here. Um, the book of James 1 and 18. It says, uh, of his own will begat he us with the word of truth, which is what we have, right? That we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. So the, the members of the elect, they're the first fruits of creation. And rightly so, they should rule. And that's where you get the word aristocrat from. Because aristocrat means best rule. The, the firstlings of the flock are, the, are the, the best to rule. You know, the first spirits, you know. Yeah, you got it. All right, so it says back in Leviticus 23. And I'll start at 10 again. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, When you become into the land which I give unto you, and shall reap the harvest thereof, then you shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest. And he shall wave the sheaf before the Lord to be accepted for you on the morrow after the Sabbath, the priest shall shall wave it. Right. And and that's why the priest would receive those things because the priest, that was, you know, they didn't work. You know, the priest, they just kept, uh, they did the office of the Lord and they would be taken care of by the congregation. You know, the rest of the other tribes, that's why they would live among the suburbs or the best parts of each one of the tribes and then what the tribes would do is they would give them a tenth of what they had and they would give them certain things and th that would be the compensation the lord gave gave the uh the levite priest for the office that they held uh it says and you shall offer that day when you wave the sheaf and the lamb without blemish of the first year for a burnt offering unto the lord and the meat offering whereof shall be two tenth deals of fine flour mingled with oil an offering made by fire unto the Lord for a sweet savor. And the drink offering thereof shall be of wine, the fourth part of an hen. And these are, you know, ancient uh, um, measurements. And you shall eat neither bread nor parched corn nor green ears until the selfsame day that you have brought an offering unto your power. It shall be a statue forever throughout your generations in all your dwellings. And you shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day that you brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. I got a scripture to back up what you're saying. Uh, Numbers 28, 25, and 26. And on the seventh day ye shall, and it said after the Sabbath, right? Ye shall have an holy convocation, and ye shall do no servile work. Also in the day of the first fruit, when ye bring a new meat offering unto your after your weeks be out ye shall have an holy convocation uh ye shall do no servile work so on that first day and on that last day are uh, are sabbaths holy convocations right now when you look up the word week or weeks the word there is uh Shaba 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 Y, which means uh seven period of seven days of years, uh week, uh period of seven days a week, feast of weeks, seven of years. So you had certain high holy, like for example, the day of atonement didn't fall on a Sabbath. But the Day of Atonement is a Sabbath. Because it said these are Sabbaths beside your Sabbaths. And that's also in Leviticus 23. So somehow High Holy Days didn't fall, always fall in line with the actual Sabbath. Like the Passover. The Passover came in the, uh, what do you call it? the 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 um, unleavened bread. That night, it came in on a Sabbath, and it ended on a Sabbath. The day of the the the, um, the the memorial of blowing of the trumpets came in on a Sabbath, which is the new moon, which is also a Sabbath. It's a it's a Sabbath. 
And then from that point, you count six days, and on the seventh day is the Sabbath. So you had the regular Sabbath, and then, what is it, three days later, you had the uh, Day of Atonement, which is, not a, which, which is not a regular Sabbath. That's why a lot of you guys can't get these, 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 these breakdowns. That's right. Uh, back in Leviticus 23 and 15, and you shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath. Now it's giving you the, 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 the starting point of when you start counting. This is talking about after, after the uh, Passover, the last Sabbath of the Passover, that's when you begin your count. It says, excuse me, and you shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath. Start on the Sabbath, it starts a day after the Sabbath. So at the end of that 49 plus that ne next day, which is 50, it lines right up. It says, from the day that you brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. Even unto the morrow after the seven Sabbaths shall you number 50 days. And that's it is, and it basically is this, this is it's telling you the same thing over again. Some guys get caught up on that. Oh, that's 50. That's 100 days. No, you don't understand what that's talking about. It says, and you shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. You shall bring out of your habitation two wave loaves of the two tenth deals. They shall be of fine flour. They shall be baked with leaven. They are the first fruits unto the Lord. And you shall offer with the bread seven lambs without blemish of the first year and one young bullock and two Rams, they shall be for a burnt offering unto the Lord, Yahweh, and their meat offerings and their drink offerings, even offerings made by fire of sweet savor unto Yahweh, because the Most High is specific with what he, what, he, what he wants. Then you shall sacrifice one kid of the goats for a sin offering and two lambs of the first year for a sacrifice of peace offerings. And the priest shall wave them with the bread of the first fruit for a wave offering before the Lord with two lambs they shall be holy to the Lord for the priest. And you shall proclaim on the selfsame day that it may be the holy convocation unto, unto you. You shall do no serve our work therein. It shall be for a, a statue forever in all your dwellings throughout your generation. Yeah, Leviticus 23 and 37 and 38. It said, These are the feasts of Yahweh, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations to offer an offering made by fire unto Yahweh, a burnt offering and a meat offering and a sacrifice and a drink offerings and drink offerings, everything upon his day. Like I said, the memorial of the blowing of the trumpet falls on the seventh new moon, which is the Sabbath, right? Now, 28, it said, besides the Sabbaths of Yahweh, so you got all those different various days, but then you got the regular Sabbath. Well, look, brother, that didn't fall on the actual Sabbath. It didn't fall on the Friday night. It ain't supposed to fall on the Friday night. It, some, sometimes, like, like I'll give you the example again. On the Passover, the Passover, that night fell in on the Sabbath. All right, verse 22. And when you reap the harvest of your land, thou shalt not make clean riddance of the corners of thy field when thou reapest, neither shalt thou gather thy any gleanings of thy harvest. Thou shalt leave them unto the poor. That's the welfare system. And to the stranger, I am the Lord your power. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, right, in the first day of the month, right, shall you have a Sabbath, a memorial of the blowing of the trumpets, a holy convocation, letting you know that the, the first day of the month, which was the memorial of blowing of the trumpet on the seventh month, is an actual Sabbath because the new moon brings in the new month. Because the new the word uh, um, a moon or the word month comes from the word moon. So the new moon is the, the new month, the, the first day of the new month, which is an actual Sabbath. And it's letting you know right here. And then there's other scriptures that let you know that the new moon is a Sabbath. And that's where you get your count. Because you have to start somewhere. You have to start the count from somewhere. The calendar and the season and everything, everything is set up to, to, uh, in order, to go in, in the proper order. So if you're going to count, you got to count from the beginning. The first day, which is the, the new moon, on, on up. And the Lord gave you the first month of the year. 
It says, um, uh, first day. It says, uh, and the Lord spake unto, verse 23, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, shall ha you have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of the trumpet, and a holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein, but you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Also the tenth day of the seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. Right? It shall be an holy convocation unto you, and you shall afflict your souls. And offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. And that's the, the day of atonement. It doesn't mean stick pins in your eyeballs or chopsticks, you know, in your ears. All right? That don't mean that. A simple ass nigga would do something like that. He'll stand in front of in front of a damn train. I'm afflicting my soul. <laughs> Dumbass nigga. It's talking about it's talking about fasting. Yeah, like you had these guys from uh, what, Gold Coast. They said, "Well, nowhere does it say that you're supposed to uh, not eat no food." And 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 we. Okay, well, well, how the hell do you afflict your souls? Huh? Well, you lay lay in your oven and put it up, put it up 500 degrees. You're afflicting your souls, you dummy. That's why them niggas is out back in back in the world bugged out of their goddamn minds, man. That's that's right. Yeah, man. And that's why I see why the most high man sometimes he'll say st certain things and he has to get super specific for, for somebody to get it. And they still don't get it. Yeah, well, show me in the Bible where it says uh, um, on the Sabbath you can't have sex. That's why, what, what was it, Stefan? Yeah, Stefan cursed them niggas out, man. He said, You stiff neck and Let me get it, man. Axe. What was it? Yeah, man, that's why, man, most that's why the most I told Moses to step back and let me smoke these people, man. You know, all that bullshit, all the game having sex with animals now. And you, hey, you niggas got to go. Yeah, yeah, this is a uh, Stefan before he was, uh, he was uh, murdered, killed. He, at least he got he got he got he got to curse them niggas out. This is I mean, he was he was going hard. Oh, he was in the spirit, man. Oh yeah, you know uh, it, I, it was so heavy that they 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 couldn't resist well, what he was gnashed, saying. They, yeah, and plus they gnashed upon them yeah, with yeah. their teeth. They, yeah. they rushed him, man. They, they were frustrated. You want to be a prophet? <laughs> uh, Acts seven and fifty one. It says, "Ye stiff neck," and then. What are you talking about? What were you saying? No, when uh, Stefan. Oh yeah, 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 oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They gnashed yeah. upon him. They, they, they ran up on him. <laughs> he, uh, this is what he said. He said, "Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised and hardened ears, and you the same clowns today that just can't get this, man. No matter how simplified it is, for, no matter how much we break it down, simplified for you, you just can't get it, man. Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised and hardened ears." You do always resist the Holy Spirit <laughs> as your fathers did, so do ye. Which of the prophets have you have your which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And and they have slain them which showed before of the coming of the just one, which is Yahweh Shai, whom ye have now been whom whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers. And then, and then when you read that, you see why they rushed up on uh, Stefan and, you know, pretty much killed him, put him to death. You know, as a matter of fact, when you jump down to the 54th verse, it says that when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth. They went because they didn't, you know, he was cutting them. All right. That's pretty much it. Gone. Yeah. So going back to Leviticus 23 and 20. Uh, seven. Also, on the tenth day of the seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. Now, the word atonement means to re, re uh, 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 like a redemption, to repair, a healing. You know, you got some possible. No, I was I was gonna comment on what you just said. Um, yeah, because the heavenly Father Yahweh got so mad with Israel that he pretty much <laughs> banished them. You know, and uh, there had to be a healing between us and the heavenly Father. And that's where Yahweh Shai, he made the ultimate atonement. Yeah. 
but we still keep that because it's 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 part of the law, you know. But the ultimate atonement was made by Yahweh Shai when he when he get, when he gave himself up on the cross, when he shed his blood. Yeah. That appeased the wrath of the heavenly Father. <laughs> That's why we we basically we rehearsed the righteous acts, you know, because Yahweh Shai already covered the bill, but we do it because the Lord said we still have to do it until Yahweh Shai comes back. We ain't tolerating you simple-minded bird brain Negroes no more, man. You guys come up stupid, man. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna, uh, scope you, scope scope you, meaning keep an eye on you. And if you get real simple, we're going to cut you off, man. We're not playing games no more. You got men that have been in this thing for eight years. You guys just coming in, talking shit. We just got to, you know, like Baloo. But when we see Baloo come up, I'm surprised Baloo ain't came on the, on the page today. But I, last week, I... I, I put the hammer on his ass you know i put you know got him out of there man because that's all you are is a big overgrown folly demon man and everybody else can see that shit so we don't give a damn about you niggas the time is going to come when the most high is going to destroy you and then that's when you're going to try to get right with the most high but it's going to be too late Yeah, talking shit. Some, uh, some you know, wick, wick, yeah, wicked talk. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. You keep on knocking, but you can't come in. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you know, hey, they, they, we, laugh, they, we laugh at you fools, man. You just like them heathens. They tried to build with the with with the men of the Lord, but the Lord told them no. You know, you're you're in that you're in that same uh, uh, category, so to speak. All right, back in Leviticus twenty three. Say that. Hey, yeah, when you, you got to make up a lot of pages because every time you come up and say something, I'm going to block you, all right? This is the third time I block you. Just, from here, just one button I push. Like my man, Tagalucci. From here, just one button I push. <laughs> all right, also on the 10th day of the month, of the seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. It shall be in holy convocation unto you, and you shall afflict your souls. And offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord, and you shall do no work in that same day, for it is a day of atonement to make an atonement for you before the Lord your power. For whosoever, whatsoever soul it be that shall not be afflicted in that same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. Yeah, because you had guys back then. You had guys back then that 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 said that um, you know, you know, the apostle Tar asked if, if uh, they ate anything. They say, yeah, some chocolate chip cookies and some milk. Because it doesn't say you can't eat chocolate chip cookies and milk. And that's what I mean. You know, the Lord has to make everything specific for certain guys, man. And that nigga is probably dead right now. Uh, this is Ecclesiastes in the Scriptures 8 and 11. It said, because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. And that's what a lot of y'all are doing because you, you've you been doing this wickedness for a number of years and the most I haven't judged you yet. And you don't think you are going to be judged. And the time is going to come where you're going to be judged. And the most I is going to open up on you niggas, man. When you do research on these niggas, man, they, I mean, they, they literally, just like the scriptures say, surpass the deeds of the wicked, man. You niggas are fucking animals, man. And when the Most High starts destroying you, we're going to be secretly, well, openly, we're going to be uh, celebrating your destruction, your demise. And anybody that's not in Israel, man, if you are more of you, black conscious, whatever, Islam, whatever you into, the Most High is going to destroy you, man. The Most High is going to destroy you. If you're not in what we're into, the, guess what? The Most High is going to deal with you, man. And he's gonna do it one day. He's gonna he's gonna he's gonna do it, and 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 you're gonna to try to get yourself right. And the mo and you might call on the name of the Most High, and the Most High is gonna st still gonna kill your black ass. He's gonna smash you. Please don't come to us, man, because you ain't gonna get the hand. You're gonna get the foot. You're gonna get that foot. Get the get the, keep keep it moving. The All hand right, foot. <laughs> yeah, man. Hey, uh, <laughs> I got a scripture. Um, the Book of Proverbs. Uh, 19 and 29 judgment or judgments <laughs> are prepared for scorners and stripes for the backs of fools yeah so deal with that you that love to scoff and scorn just know judgment is coming for you and it ain't 
Yeah. It ain't it ain't gonna be pretty, man. I'm gonna read it again because because it's a it's a beautiful scripture. Proverbs 19 and 29. Judgments are prepared for scorners, and stripes for the backs or the back of fools. Now the scriptures say the heavenly Father is the King of Terrors. So why would only you know? You got to be a real dumbass nigga, man, to be a scoffer and a scorner, and and uh, play around with the King of King of Terrors. Do it and to mess around with the men of the Most High. Yeah. Here we're doing the will of the Most High. Hey, the most size, Mark, the angels, the angels are just looking at the most size saying, please let me get this. Yeah, let today. me get him, man. Let me get him. And when the time comes, boy, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to give you a set. We're going to give you a nice send off, man. <laughs> just a sample, boss. Just a sample. Yeah, yeah. The angels do that, man. They say, no, let me get him. Let me get that nigga, please. I got a real good way to get him, you know, but the Lord, had that. that's why the script, I'm sorry, brother. That's why the scriptures say the Lord is long suffering. He said, no, nah, no, nah, just, just, you know, but you got it, bro. Yeah, well, they have a council up in, in the heavens, you know, on the right hand side and the left hand side. The most I said, who's going to do this and who's going to do that? And they'll, and they'll, hey, they put biddings up there, man. You know, they put a bidding up to, up to who's going to do what. Hey, doesn't scripture say every day judgment doth proceed yeah. forward? Yet the wicked know of no shame. Right. Roughly paraphrasing says every day judgment doth proceed forward. Yep. So those scoffers, one day they appear on that list. Okay, it's his turn now, yeah. you know, and they yeah. get that judgment. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, Isaiah 30 and 1. Woe to the rebellious children, say of Yahweh, that take counsel, but not of me, and that cover with the covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. You know, and, and, and th that's the reason why, like the, the scripture the Apostle Tar read, you know, um, you know, you got these jakes that keep doing what they're doing because they haven't been judged for it. These scoffers, they come and talk shit, and they see nothing's happening to them, so they keep on doing it, but they don't know that their shit is mounting up, you know, mounting up, mounting up. Remember, the most I could have took the, uh, uh, um, the uh, Canaanites out of that land, but he let them go because they still were still committing iniquity. Once it came to a certain point, a cutoff point, the most I got rid of them out of that land. Same thing with you guys. Yeah, I got a precept for you. Uh, the book of Psalms 18 and 40. Thou hast also given me the necks of mine enemies, that I might destroy them that hate me. They cried, but there was none to save them. And that's the day of their judgment. Even unto the Lord, but he answered them not. Then did I... Then what? Then did I beat them small as the dust before the wind. I did cast them out as the dirt in the streets. Okay, that's that's pretty much it. You guys are crazy out of their mind. All right, Leviticus 23 and 30. And whatsoever soul it be that doeth any work in that same same day. The same soul will will I destroy from among his people. See, back then it was done quickly, like you know you had a, you know the script. The Lord said that no, you shouldn't do no work on a Sabbath day. And this one man, he was picking up sticks, just a simple task of picking up sticks. And what happened? The Lord had him put to death, right then and there. You know, but this time the Lord is long suffering, because he has a judgment, he has a purpose. But don't think just because the Most High move on you that he's not going to move on you still. He's still going to get you eventually. You know, I don't think he forgot all this. So, like the scripture says, there's so many people out here. The Lord ain't going to remember my sins. Man, the Lord knows everything, man. Yahweh Shai knows everything. It says, you shall do no manner of work. It shall be a statue forever throughout your generations and all your dwellings. It shall be unto you for a Sabbath of rest, and you shall afflict your souls in the ninth day of the month at even. From even to even shall you celebrate your Sabbaths. That's how we keep our days, from evening to evening. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of the seventh month shall be the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days unto the Lord. Uh, Sukkoth. You know, there's, uh, I forget how to say it in, in the actual uh, um, Lashuan Kodash, but in the so-called Jews call it Sukkoth, which means tabernacles or tents. On the first day shall be in holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein. Seven days you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. 
On the eighth day shall be an holy convocation unto you. You shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. So it's a feast of eight days, but you actually keep the, the feast of tents seven days. You know, the feast in tents seven days. Then the eighth day you hold a Sabbath, which is a regular Sabbath anyway. You know, it is a solemn assembly and you shall do no servile work therein. These are the feasts of the Lord, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations, to offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord, a burnt offering, a meat offering, a sacrifice, and drink offering, everything upon his day. Beside the Sabbath, uh, the Lord, and beside your gifts, and beside all your vows, and beside all your free will offerings, which you give unto the Lord, Yahweh. Also on the 15th day of the seventh month, when you have gathered in the fruit, of the land you shall keep a feast unto the lord seven days on the first day shall you keep shall be a sabbath and on the eighth day shall be a sabbath so that's, your in -gathering. that's your in gathering which you have one in the beginning of the year and then coming into the end of the year so you had two of them and then we're going to institute that back in the kingdom because we're going to have have own land you know it says and you shall and you shall and you shall Take you on the first day the bows of goodly trees, branches of palm trees, and the bows of thick trees, and willows of brook, uh, of the brook, and you shall rejoice before the Lord your power seven days, and you shall keep it a feast unto the Lord seven days in the year. It shall be a statue forever in your generations. You shall celebrate it in the seventh month. You shall dwell in booths seven days. All that are Israelite born shall dwell in booths. And that was only a feast for Israel. Now in the kingdom, the nations are going to have to keep these uh, 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 feast days also. It said that your generations may know. You no, know, that's why it's, it says in the book of Zechariah, the 14th yeah, chapter. They won't get no rain if they, yeah. Yeah, because, you know, you're going to, you know, the, when, when the kingdom is established, the laws, statutes, and commandments are going to be put into our inward parts so we don't have to teach each other anymore. But the Lord is going to be the one that teaches us. But these other nations, they're still going to have to be taught because they're going to have to learn the ways. Because these laws, statutes, and commandments were set up, they were set up to really to govern the whole uh, world. But it was only given to us at the time because the Lord knew that there was going to be a time when we were going to fall and get back up. But then when the kingdom was established, these nations were going to be forced to uh, uh, keep the laws, statutes, and commandments also. Um <clears throat> It says that your generations may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your power. And that was a memorial of what happened in the in the uh, wilderness because we didn't have hotels in the wilderness. You know, you didn't have an inn, you know, a desert inn, you know. And plus in the kingdom, when we keep it, we're going to be living, we're going to be living super rich. And we're going to be living in castles. We're going to have... Uh, uh, servants wait on us we're gonna have concubines we're gonna have the best of everything literally so for that period of time we're gonna have to humble ourselves you're gonna have to put you know you have a crown in your head you have to bet you're gonna have to be in that field for that period of time so what did that do that humbled you man which that shows you that the most high is beautiful man because you got to be you got to be you got to understand humility Con. Is, is a way of humbling yourself is the ultimate way of humbling yourself before the most high you got guy and i guarantee you when we go down there downtown to speak i bet you there's going to be guys in the audience that have been in the audience for years and we're going to ask them did you keep the day of it oh i didn't know we were supposed to keep it and i've been i put up videos on it we've been talking about it and we always speak about it man and you should know you guys that can't get it man you know I don't know what to say to you. In other words, the Most High haven't elevated you to that to that level. This is serious business, man. That's why you got some guys that are part of the camp, and you got some guys that are in the audience. And maybe the Most High put some of them in there just to be in the audience. But there's levels to this thing, just like anything else. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I, I got a scripture because um, Elder Apostle Tom mentioned about the kingdom. Uh, this is like a a glimpse of it, uh, the book of uh, Isaiah 60, beginning at 15. Whereas thou hast been forsaken and hated, so that no man went through thee, I will make thee an eternal excellency, a joy of many nations. And that's talking about in the kingdom. Thou shalt also, thou shalt also suck the milk of the Gentiles. Now these Gentiles are the other nations. 
the milk, meaning their riches, and shall suck the breast of kings, meaning their riches, and thou shall know that I, um, Isaiah 60 and 16. And you know the whole that we'll read that whole thing. And we're gonna read about the kingdom too. You Con. know how the kingdom's gonna be. Con. There's a whole lot of scriptures and topics in my head. Con. That's why I said various topics, other topics. Uh, also uh, Isaiah 49. Con. Uh, we can read about Solomon's uh, uh house and, and temple. Con. How we live, you know, and how we're gonna live. Con. Con. And we're gonna and we're gonna live better than Solomon. Yeah. You know, we're gonna live better than Solomon. Yeah. And Solomon was Yahweh Shai. In the, in the reincarnation, I'm saying like Mo, for you for the ones of you guys that don't think that reincarnation is in the Bible, uh, that that includes you, Dr. James White, and uh, uh, you, uh, Rakov, the GOCC. Reincarnation is biblical, man, and you, William Bell. That's right. Yep, that's right. Yeah, that's you know that's pretty much it. I mean, um, it basically, uh, you know. Okay. 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 This is the last verse. Uh, Leviticus twenty-three and forty-four, and Moses declared unto the children of Israel the feast of the Lord. That's it. That's it on that. Okay. Um, the book of Isaiah sixty and one. Arise, shine, for thy light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Just in case Dr. James White is listening, read that again, please. Isaiah 60 and 1, arise, shine. By the way, Isaiah is what? A prophet, right? God. What do prophets do? Prophesy. Prophesy. What does the word prophecy mean? To say before. Okay, good. Can it be uh, 10 days before? Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah it could be, yeah. you know, you can, uh, immediate prophecy can come to pass. Yeah. Uh, like uh, when uh, the Babylonian kingdom came down, mini, mini, tekel. Remember? Yep. The, that 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 was a prophecy, but it was written on the wall, right. and and he died, and he and he went down, or the Babylonians went down that very night. That very so night, that yeah. prophecy took place in a matter of hours. Con. There's some uh, prophecies that take place in a matter of months, in a matter of years, in a matter of hundreds of years, in a matter of thousands of years. Right. So Isaiah the 60th chapter, when did that take place? It didn't take place yet. Mm -hmm. So this is we're talking about a thousand years. Uh, a couple thousand years in the future. So read that again, please. Isaiah 60 and 1. Arise, shine, for thy light, thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. So what does it mean, arise, shine, for that glory of the Lord is risen upon you? Who is it, who's it, who's it going to rise on? The children of Israel. It's not going to rise on Edomites. It's not going to rise on uh, Moabites. It's not going to rise on uh, Hamites or Ishmaelites or any other ite. It's going. It's going to land. It's going to. It's going to be the blessing. is going to be on Israel. So when we read these. The rest of this book here, this chapter, yeah. it's taught. It's applying to Israel. Yeah. You're not going to be in that number. That's right. <laughs> For be, yeah, that, yeah, that's right. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. That's why people don't know what the hell is going on. That's yeah. why he got Jake said it into uh the different black consciousness movement some in the it gro that's gross darkness yeah all right yeah. they're they're into uh uh um like like uh this guy was doing a thing uh, uh captain Zazariak with Sarnetta so I think uh uh he ran into the guy that was supposedly uh touched by Dr. York there's a new video that was put up and um and Cesariac, Captain Cesariac said, yeah, this is the spirit, because I don't get here this early. Yeah, it was the spirit. So uh, Sarnetta said, yeah, it's the energy, the energy. And so Cesariac said, no, it ain't the energy. It's the mo He tried to say the most high. Yeah. Well, you have no business being around those people, man. You have no business being around them, because he doesn't, see, Sarnetta doesn't want to acknowledge the most high. Right. He doesn't want to acknowledge the most high. That's why he said it's the energy. Right. He didn't want to say it was the most high. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be around that dude if you pay me uh, five G's to be around him for five minutes, man. That's right. You ain't supposed to be around them people. You're supposed to be doing what the plan of the Most High told you to what to do. Yeah. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord, which equates to ignorance, like you know, like uh, the elder apostle is bringing out. 
but the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And really, that starts with us, man, through this knowledge. All right? The, uh, an example of the glory of the Lord is this knowledge, this truth, which, as you can see, very few Israelites can really get. All right? And, that, and more and more, as we become closer to the end, it's, it's becoming more and more apparent, apparent who has the knowledge and who doesn't. All right? Uh, the third verse, it says, And the Gentiles shall come to thy light. And yeah, that that's quick, right. It's that's that, right. The simple demons jump on these guys. <laughs> so obviously, you you should know it's talking about the Israelites that were scattered among the Gentiles. All right, thy light is the truth. In other words, thy light is to know, because what's the opposite of not knowing? Ignorance. The opposite of not knowing is gross darkness, like we read about in the earlier verses. All right. Uh, the opposite of darkness is what light. So you're able to see where you're going. So it says, and the Gentiles, the Israelite foreigners, that's what that means, shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. The kings are, uh, the, kings are the same thing. You know, the... the you got to keep telling them that. Right. Because them demons. Yeah, kind of. You know, can't, they're going to be thinking <laughs> king this, king that. <laughs> yeah, king because... King Neptune, you know. Yeah. The queen <laughs> of England is going to come. She's, a, you know. King you let them know the kings uh, the, those kings are Israelites, man. Yeah, they're Israelites. This is the, the third verse is talking about Israelites, man. Because we're gonna be a nation of kings. That's uh pursuant to uh Exodus oh, 19. Man, Ari Osper, yeah. Bring it out. Yeah, that's right. Don't say it because it's sim <laughs> them simple demons. You gotta move yeah. quick with yeah. this thing. Them simple demons. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. You gotta you gotta break it down. Yeah. So you gotta break it down to the to the very last compound. <laughs> uh, Ezekiel, because you said this is this is only for a very few. Yeah. Well, this is that's the scriptures. Uh, Ezekiel eleven sixteen. Therefore say, therefore say, thus saith the Most High Power. Although I have cast them far off from among the heathen. That's right. Uh, far off among the heathen, and although I have scattered them among the countries, literally, mm -hmm. yet will I be to them as a little sanctuary in the countries where they shall come. So you got a, a, a handful of guys out there in the in the UK, right? You got a couple of camps yep. out there, right? Yeah. You got different states. Yeah. You got they're, they're, we're not big. And they're small. They're and they're small, small yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah. A big camp like out there in LA would be like 45, 50 guys, mm -hmm. which that's a small number. Yeah. Then you got some camps where it's just one one brother or two brothers or three brothers. So this is a little thing. That's right. Um, going back to the third verse, and the Gentiles shall come to thy light, which that's the Israelite foreigners, and and kings to the brightness of thy rising, which is the same thing, Israelite foreigners, because we're going to be a nation of kings. Now here's the proof. Exodus 19 and 6. It says, and ye shall be unto me. Well, let me start the fifth verse. Now, therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, now this is the Heavenly Father speaking, Yahweh, and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. So right there, that's showing you the Lord ain't dealing with all people. All right? You have a, you have a group of people that's above uh, uh, other groups of people, and that's the Lord's chosen, which is the nation of Israel. Ye shall be a peculiar, that word peculiar means strange, because we're a strange people. A uh, peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. Now here's the, here's the point, the sixth verse. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests. So we're going to be a nation of kings. Now that word kingdom, when you break it down, it means domicile of the kings. So we're going to be kings, man. And a king is a person with all his sovereignty, meaning all his, his so-called God-given rights, something that we don't have here. Because we're, we're slaves underneath the so-called white man, in particular the bankers. All right? And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the sons of Israel. It says children, but it, the word there is sons. So it, it doesn't say all the nations. It says these are the words you shall speak unto the sons of Israel. Okay? So going back. 
Come. And back on what you just read. Come. Uh, first Peter uh, 2 and 7, it says, Unto you, therefore, which believe, key word, he is precious. But unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders dis disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. Well, that's what the mother camps did. They disallowed us because they mentioned each other's name, big up, this camp, big up, and leave all well, the stone. Now, we're not saying that with Yahweh Shai, but we're doing the will of Yahweh Shai. But Yahweh Shai compared him, us to himself in a, a Matthew 10 chapter, around about the 25th verse went down. It says, um, if, if the master went through these things, you're going to go through the same thing. Okay, so we're going to be in that, right, we're going to be in that number, all right? It says, uh, uh, 28 verse, and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, you got a lot of guys stumbling at the word. The mark of the beast. You got ISUPK out there in St. Louis. They're gonna do a thing called a, a lecture on the mark of the beast, and we know it's we know they ain't gonna break it down the right way. That's why you stumble at the word. All you groups are stumbling at the word one way or another. Yeah. And yeah. a stone is stumbling of ro and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, uh, being disobedient. Whereunto also they were appointed. So that so that there's a reason why you're stumbling at the word, because the most high appointed you to stumble at that word, man. Yeah. It's all the most high is doing. Yeah. It says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of out of darkness into his marvelous light. That's why we're constantly doing videos, man. Last night I did it, I did a breakdown on Daniel the eighth chapter, which is what which was needed, badly needed. Because you got other camps, they'll 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 take precepts from Daniel 8 and Daniel 7, but they won't go into a full breakdown. Good. You see? So the spirit jumped on me to go into these I don't know what breakdown I'm gonna do do yet next, but the most high, you know, in due time will jump on me. Then when I got up, I did it with a couple of videos. The spirit's on us. We're doing we're we're doing a live stream right now. We're getting ready to go on the highways and the byways. Right. To tomorrow, somebody tonight, somebody gonna be doing a show. Tomorrow there's gonna be a live show. Monday there's yep. gonna be a two or three live shows going lessons. on. Lessons. Too. Lessons going on. Yeah. Spirit jump on me. Spirit jump on this this uh, apostle right here. Yeah. That that apostle over there. Yeah. That elder over there. That teacher over there. This you getting flooded with this truth, so you can't. And then, and then when you go on the comment board, we might do uh, videos on some somebody, some that uh, uh, somebody on the comment board made uh, a comment. You know, that's right. Yeah, the the prophecy says that the virgins, the wise virgins, will trim their lamps up. And when you trim your lamp up, you're given much light. All right, that means to turn up your lamp. Uh, the the fourth verse. Lift up thine eyes, Isaiah 60 and 4. Lift up thine eyes round about and see all they gather themselves together. They come to thee. The thee is Israel. Thy sons shall come from far. Thy sons, meaning the ones that were scattered among the other nations. And thy daughters shall be nursed at thy side. Then thou shalt see and flow together. We're going to be one nation. And thine heart, no divisions. And thine heart shall fear and be enlarged, because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. Uh, the abundance of the sea, meaning the, the, the sea represents the people. So their riches is going to be, that's why there's an old saying, riches are not destroyed. They are what? They are transferred. So all the riches that the bankers have, all that gold, it's going to be transferred to us, man. They're just keeping it warm for us, those 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 bankers, all right? The, the bankers of uh, the top banking families of Esau, the Rothschilds, Rockefellers. Um, because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. The forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. Now, this Gentile here is the other nations. The forces or their forces is their riches and them too. Because they're going to be our slaves, all right? Hey, when you have slaves, that's part of your riches. <laughs> hey, to have slaves, hey, the Lord said that we are uh, royal people. Royal people have slaves, man. 
to do the menial labor. Okay? Uh, the multitude of camels shall cover thee, the dromedaries of Midian and Ephah. All day from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and incense, and they shall show forth the praises of the Lord. Now, they shall show forth the praises of the Lord. That would have to be the Israelites that were scattered among those nations. Because only Israel can show forth the praises of the Lord. All right? Which the praises of the Lord is what? This, this knowledge. All the flocks of Kedar shall be gathered together unto thee. The rams of Naboth shall minister unto thee. They shall come with acceptance on my mine altar. Again, it's the same thing. The Israelites that are scattered among those nations. And I will glorify the house of my glory. Okay? Because you got Israelites that are scattered among every nation on the planet Earth. And that's in the book of Revelation, the fifth chapter, the ninth verse. All right? Clearly says that. As a matter of fact, let me get it. I got something real quick while you're getting that. Kind. You just mentioned about uh, trans, uh, transferred Ecclesiasticus 10, verses 7 and 8. Matter of fact, start from 7 and read down to, uh, what is it, 16, 17? Yeah, start uh, uh, Ecclesiasticus chapter 10, verses 7 down to about 17th verse. Start from the 7th verse. Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiasticus 10 and 7. Pride is hateful before the Most High and man, and by both does one commit iniquity. Yeah, that, that's, uh, that's these bankers. Because of unrighteous dealings, injuries, and riches got by deceit, the kingdom is translated from one people to another. You know, that's why riches are never lost. You know, land, uh, uh, gold, silver, precious stones, precious metals, all of those things are, are you know, uh, different fabrics, uh, um, um, fruits, vegetables, cattle, all of that is riches. You know, it goes from one person to another. So if it, so the bankers, the way they got their riches was through uh, thievery, you know, through robbery. Yeah, they took, like, uh, case in point, the Ark of Titus. Now, depicted on the Ark is um, uh, the Romans uh, carrying the, the, the menorah and the, the things that they took out of the temple. They took our riches. So we're going to get that back. We're going to get what they took from us. We're going to get it back. Riches are transferred. It says, why is earth and ashes proud? There is not a more wicked thing than a covetous man. And that's, that, that uh, describes Esau all the way, these international bankers. It says, for such an one setteth his own soul to sale. That's why he sold his birthright. Esau sold his birthright because he didn't have no care for his birthright. He didn't give a damn about the birthright. He just cared about himself. He's undisciplined. Undisciplined. That's this devil. This devil is undisciplined. That's why he's 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 corrupted the, the very earth which he's supposed to live in. Yeah. Because he's undisciplined. That's right. Corrupted the, the, the air, corrupted the water, corrupted the food. <laughs> it says, because while he, he liveth, he casteth away his no within them living good they don't give a damn about nobody else they don't have they don't have a, a remorse or mercy upon anybody it says the physician cutteth off a long disease and he that is today a king tomorrow shall die no hey that you you see <laughs> oh yeah oh it started acting up oh, look at that yeah the the the, the, the um the, the Rothschilds and them they that's these guys that they're going to be casted down you know, to, today you're a king, but tomorrow you shall die. And what that means is, you know, literally, eventually you're going to drop dead, but you're going to go from a, 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 a status quo of living, living good, to a status quo of, of being, it'd be better off that you were dead. You know? It says, um, for when a man is dead, he shall inherit creeping things, beasts, and worms. The beginning of pride is when one departed from the Most High and his heart is turned away from his Maker. All you Israelites are sold out. The Most High got something for you. Right. It says, for pride is the beginning of sin. Right. It says, for pride is the beginning of sin. 
And the reason why you depart is because you're proud. And you can see it when them scoffers come up, they make their comments. They, you can see that the comments are prideful. And he that hath it, and he that hath it shall pour out abominations. And that's why they're totally breaking the scriptures down wrong, bringing out uh, all these uh, uh, wayward uh, philosophies and doctrines. It says, and therefore the Lord brought upon them strange calamities and overthrew them utterly. And the Lord's going to do that. He's going to get you, General Johanna. He's going to get you, Nate. He's going to get all of you uh, uh, flunkies from the other uh, um, um, uh, uh, Israelite groups. He's going to get you uh, 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 fallouts from uh, GMS. He's going to get all of you. He said, the Lord hath cast down the thrones of the proud princes and set up the meek in their stead. So when these devils go down, the Lord is going to raise us uh, back up. It says, the Lord hath plucked up the roots of the proud nations and planted the lowly in their place. The Lord overthrew countries of the heathen and destroyed them to the foundations of the earth. Verse 17. He took some of them away and destroyed them and hath made their memorial to cease from the earth. I got a couple of quick precepts. This is uh, Proverbs 28 and 8. He that by usury and unjust gain increaseth his substance, he shall gather it for him that will pity the poor. Because all that all that good you got, you Rothschilds, you uh, uh, Rockefellers, you uh, Vanderbilts, you different uh, international bankers, Oppenheimers and all that, all those riches you have are going to be turned over to us. Yeah, and Job, didn't it say he shall vomit up those the riches? Yeah, Job the 20th chapter. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's okay. a part of vomiting up because they ate it down by taking it. The way they're going to vomit it up is they're going to have to turn it loose. <laughs> you got to turn it loose. This is um, Proverbs 13 and 22. A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. <laughs> so, hey, man, you, you international bankers, you better live it up as you have been because pretty soon you're going to lose all of those riches and the Lord is going to turn it over unto us. Yeah, it says it for in one hour uh, so, shall so riches come to naught. Riches come to naught. Yeah, you're going to lose everything you got, you bankers, in one hour. Uh, here it is right here. Um, the book of Job 20 and 10. I'll go right to the point. His children shall seek to please the poor and his hands shall restore their goods. So you're going to have to give it up. Turn it loose. Okay, back in Isaiah. Now, I made a statement. I said about the Israelites going to come out of every nation. And we're really, really, we're the only group, Great Millstone, that teaches this. All right. Uh, the book of Revelation 5 and 9. And they sung a new song saying, which we're singing that song now. We don't have to get up on stage and and, and act like we're an R&B crooner, like, uh, <laughs> like Elder. The guy who calls himself Elder Rakar, or act like we're the new Fetty Wap of Israel, like uh, IUIC. We're singing the song now, man. All right, and they shall and and they sung a new song saying, "Thou art worthy to take the book, and to open the seals thereof," which through the spirit of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai we're doing. We're, we're giving you the explanation. That's what it means. Open the seals thereof, for thou was slain, which is talking about Yahweh Shai. And has redeemed us to the heavenly Father by thy blood, out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Why? Because Israel was scattered throughout every kindred, tongue, people, and nation. That's why. All right. And uh, 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 to, to back that up is uh, Hosea eight and eight, where it says, "Now shall they be about the Gentiles as a vessel wherein is no pleasure." It's talking about Israel. Now, going back to Isaiah 60 and 8, it says, Who are these that fly as a cloud as the doves to their windows? That's talking about the deliverance in the chariots. Okay, because to get out of the nuclear destruction that's coming, we'll have to be in those chariots, all right, to, to, to escape the nuclear destruction. Uh, read on the ninth verse. Surely the isle shall wait for me and the ships of Tarshish first, to bring thy sons from far. Again, those are the Israelites that were scattered among the nations. Uh, their silver and their gold with them, unto the name of the Lord thy power, and to the Holy One of Israel, because he have glorified thee. 
and the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls. Now these strangers are talking about the other nations, because they're gonna they're gonna build up the kingdom. You gotta okay? know how to differentiate. What's that? You gotta know how to differentiate. Yeah, and that's why that's why the scriptures speak about this being a mystery. Okay. Sure, the Gentiles. The mystery, right? This the, the, this knowledge is 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 a mystery, and you have to you know the spirit of the Lord how Bashim Yahshai have to work with you to interpret it, man. All right. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls. That's those other nations. And their king shall minister unto thee. That's plain. For in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor have I had mercy on thee. And this proves that all the other nations are going into slavery. When it says they shall minister unto you, meaning they will serve you. They'll be your slave. Another word for slave is a servant or a minister. Uh the eleventh verse. Therefore, yeah, that is, is not going to be just you know uh, somebody that you just tap. Okay, go get that for me, please. Right. It's going to be it's going to be hardcore slavery, man. That's why, right. like in the movie, uh, uh, coming to America, how uh, Eddie Eddie Murphy when he woke up, yep. he had people playing music for him. He had women ready to to at his beck and yep. call. They were washing him. They were washing him down. He had uh, rose petals with them concubines. We're gonna have concubines. We're gonna have them all them women of these different nations. That's right. And then we're gonna have our wives too. That's right. We're gonna be, we're gonna be living beautifully, we're living man. Living beautiful. You know. <laughs> the only thing missing from that movie was Eddie Murphy should have had a bunch of crackers playing slaves, man. Yeah. That was the only thing that was missing in that movie. That's right. That's right. God, God, they they would have blacklisted him. <laughs> yeah, it, it wouldn't have made yeah, it too like Holly. Blacklisting. Um, uh, Nate Parker, the guy that put together the movie, the birth of the birth of, birth of a nation, the Nat Turner story. Now they got allegations that he raped this chick what 19 years ago, but basically they, they acquitted him. But they bring after what is it 17, 18, 19 years ago, they bring this thing up to try to uh, demonize get this him. demonize him because this movie's coming out. Now when that movie comes out, Most High Willing. I'm going to try to catch it. If it comes out on a Wednesday, I'm going to see it on a Wednesday. All right? If it comes out a Friday night, 1, 1 a.m., I'll see it Friday night, the first showing, man. I'm going to see it, and we're going to do a special on it, man. Con, con. Because he's showing you, man, that, that that that's going to put that spirit in Jake. That's going to rouse Jake's spirit up. And them and you Jakes that go to work go to work that Monday, and you see him crackers, you ain't going to say too much to him. Yeah. Just I remember when I was in high school when yeah, Roots came out, oh, yeah, and the yeah. next day, man, <laughs> we wouldn't say shit to them white people, white white <laughs> students, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We would look at them okay. like, okay. Okay. Do, you know, that's uh, that's what happened, man. I remember okay. that, man. We were watching every week. We wouldn't say we wasn't talking to the teachers. We were looking at the teachers sideways. So that that's the most I put the spirit on that cat. All right, that's right. To put that movie out, man, to rouse your spirit up, you know. That's right. Yeah, I got it right here. And the, and, and the, tra the translation is taking place, man. We done took over the uh, the internet, man. We done took over that YouTube. Oh, hell yeah. Hey, man, Jake is all up on YouTube, man. They got, like, regular TV shows. Like, you catch them every week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, you got all these Jake different shows. Hey, like, hey, but, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm saying, I'm saying these actual shows, like, uh, like, like no 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 like you got you got uh you got uh Tommy Sotomayor he got a regular you know you got you got side another and them they got the regular anything that happens they're gonna do a show on it you know and the same thing with us and all the other Israel we we constantly doing this man and you never know it ain't no thing where well you gotta catch us next next week at nine o'clock the spirit might jump on me five hours from now or, or, or ten hours from now I might get up three in the, three in the morning and, and have a thought in my, my mind and do a show on it man and y'all brothers just like the other day y'all just did a show out of nowhere man you know so so that so we take we're pushing this word man you know Psalms 19 come in the past the power of the unicorn and if, and it's very powerful oh yeah you know yeah yeah, I got a, a, a scripture because, uh, you know, um, like that movie about to come out. That's what it's designed to do, man. Through the spirit of power of Yahweh Bashim Yahshai, is designed to to rouse Jake up. You got it, the brother. Uh, a GMS Las Vegas, uh, Vegas sit down. Said, can't wait to see see it so I can watch the crackers look looks 
on their faces walking out the theater. Well, I just came up with an idea. Should I might just we just might just have the cameras out there after we see the movie and see people come out the movie and do that'd be a show right there. Just interview Jake. The interview, what do you think about the movie? You know, what you know, how do you feel about white people? And then we'll even interview Edomites. What do you think about the movie? Yeah. Do you think that you should pay for what you did? Yeah. Hey, brother, we can play on anything, man. Huh. Don't give us none because we're going to play on it, man. Sure. We're going to play on it. And it's going to hey, hey, I, I'm, I'm telling you right now, man, all them guys in the black and uncon conscientious community and the, the different groups out there and the other Israelite groups, you know we're going to play off that movie. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna play that thing. We're gonna we're gonna ride those. We're gonna ride that car. We're gonna ride that vehicle until the wheels fall off. You know, when that movie come out, we're gonna ride that for about a good month. Yeah, that, that, that's the most I too uh, uh, spiritually low kicking you. You know how you low kick somebody after a while that 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 part that leg gets real sore. And, and 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 just by touching it, it gets tender, and eventually you fall. That's the most I kicking at at you, Jake's out there to rouse you up. Now, if I could read this real quick. Genesis 49. That's what I had. Oh, so like you, got you, you got it, Apostle. You got it. It says, it, it says uh, uh, Genesis 49 and 8. I'm sorry, 9. Judah is a lion's whelp from the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down, he couched as a lion. It says, and as an old lion. So a lot of you Jakes out there, even though you're young, so-called Negroes, Latinos, rest of you other tribes, especially among your so-called Negroes, you're like a old, you're, even though you're young, you're like an old lion. You're settled in your ways. You know, you 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 don't want to ruffle any feathers. You know, you 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 uh, subscribe to the uh, American dream. You subscribe to this homosexual agenda, this metrosexual agenda. You subscribe to the nigger woman, man. Yep. Don't tell me, them brothers in Canada, they already saw it, man. It says birth of a nation. They they view. To a standing ovation at Toronto, despite despite controversy. See, now we got to wait a whole month. I'm gonna really, hey, we're gonna we're gonna ride it. We're gonna ride it when that movie come up. All these different so-called Jake, different uh shows. We're gonna ride that for a good month and change. It says, "Who shall rouse him up?" So this is the Lord. Uh, in that Turner movie, October seventh. So that's. That's basically about three, three, uh, yeah, but a little bit more than three weeks, about a month from now. And like I said, man, we may do it where we get together. The apostles and certain elders, we might all get together and, and, and meet up and, and, and do it. Bring the cameras. Bring a couple of cameras, man. We might get the live feed while we're in the theater. Shit. He does the live feed on his phone. So possibilities are endless. Con. It says, "Who shall rouse him up?" So the, that's the Lord rousing, rousing up the, the spirit of Jake. See, they're yeah. rousing up that that old that them old wounds. You know, rising them back up. Why? Because those old wounds were never healed, man. Those old wounds were never healed. You have to understand that, man. You you crackers, you get mad because we bring up slavery, we bring up the atrocities that you've done, but those old wounds have never been healed. Got to be closure. It's that's gotta, it. You gotta you know, and, and and as long as as long as as long as those wound those wounds are open and not and, and not healed, the the Lord is gonna keep pounding and keep pounding and keep pounding with that hammer of His until until the, until these devils pay, man. You know. Yeah, this and, is, uh, I'm sorry. I was I was gonna add to what you said, Yahweh Shai, which you call Jesus Christ. He's coming to bring division. By the time Yahweh Shai gets here with with the angels, you're gonna have mass division, man. Uh, the book of Luke 12 and 51. Suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth. This is Yahweh Shai speaking, which you call Jesus Christ. I tell you nay, meaning no, but rather division. All right? And then did not the Lord say that nation shall rise against nation? Yep. That's your race war right there. So you got to have something. Now the Lord said he's going to bring what? He's going to send what? Fanners yep. unto Babylon, and they shall fan them. So those movies fan the flames of <laughs> fan the flames of discontent among the so-called white man and among the and we're cooking the cookies of discontent. Yeah, that's right. We were shaped in it. We was born in it, like Bain said. <laughs> yeah, man. Pretty much, man. <laughs> Bain was Bain was all right, man. And Bain was the best part of Batman, man. Fuck Batman. Bain was the guy. He was the dude, man. Yep. The dude. Um, 
Fanners, I got to get that scripture. Yeah, because these Fanners. devils, man, they they pretty much they they uh when when they when they got power and they got control o- over the world, man, they they really stuck it to Jake, man. Oh yeah. I just got to read the scripture. We all know the scripture by heart, you know. Uh, Second Ezra uh, six, um, starting at uh, verse seven. All right. Then answered I and said, What shall be the de- departing of a uh, uh, parting a son of times? Or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth? And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau <laughs> were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the hill of Esau, and you crackers, you at least should know by now that you're Edomites, right? For Esau is the end of the world or end of his age, and Jacob, Yaquab, the supplanter, is the beginning of it that followeth. That's right. We all know that scripture by heart, but I had to bring it out. That's right. Yeah, so no matter how many times James White tried to say Esau, Edom don't exist, well, there's the prophecy, which you had. I'm waiting, all, for, the, I'm waiting for the video of him. Yeah. He said Esau was done away with already. I was all afraid. I'm waiting for the video. Give me the breakdown, baby. <laughs> that's, that's it. Give me yeah. that breakdown, man. Yeah. Um, the book of Jeremiah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, mm-hmm. I must be allowed to read. Con, con, con. <laughs> okay. All uh, 55. Jump down to the 55th verse. All this have I spoken before thee, O Yahweh, because thou madest the world. For our for our sake, that's this is Ezra speaking, which by the way he's a he's an Israelite, a Levite to be exact. Uh, uh, he was the direct descendant of uh, of Aaron, the high priest. So he was a priest and a prophet. Uh, as for the other people, uh oh, the uh, this 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 kills that James White bullshit and that low cab cologne bullshit. As for the other, because you the mixed multitude. Well, let's read about the mixed multitude. 56 verses talking about the mixed multitude, man. As for the other people, meaning the other nations, which also come of Adam, thou hast said that they are nothing. But be, and somebody get me, what's that? Isaiah uh, 40, verse 17, yeah. But be like unto spittle, and has likened thee, these other nations, Abundance of them unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. And now, O Yahweh, behold, these heathen, which have ever been reputed as nothing, have begun to be lords over us and to devour us. Now, now they're over us right now in the form of Esau. Esau is still in power. This is Isaiah chapter 40, verse 15. Behold. The nations are as a drop of a bucket and are counted as a small dust of the balance. Behold, he taketh up the isles as a very little thing. And Lebanon is not sufficient to burn, nor the beast thereof sufficient for a burnt offering. So no matter how many offerings these devils, these other nations offer to the Lord, it's not going to be enough for him to accept them as his people. Yeah, Lebanon was known for its trees. So if you set Lebanon on fire, that still wouldn't appease the Heavenly Father. Right. And he's very direct in what he's saying. That's it. You know? He's very precise. He's very precise. He's very direct. He's, he's surgical with it. And he don't change. Above all, he don't change, man. That's right. <laughs> Malachi 3 and 6. He don't change. That's right. He ain't going to change. It says, all nations before him are as nothing, and they are counted to him less than nothing and vanity. So pretty much, you, you, you nations, man... You're fucked. You're fucked. You're, you're proper uh, fucked. Amos 1 verse 11. Thus saith Yahweh, for three transgressions of Edom, the Edomites, and for four, I will not turn away the, the punishment thereof. Because he did pursue his brother, which is Jacob, Yaquab, with the sword and did cast off all pity. And his anger did tear perpetually you know what I want perpetually, Ezekiel, 30, Ezekiel 35, and he kept his wrath forever. So all of a sudden, now you get you get a you get a pass. You ain't getting a pass, you fucking devil. You ain't getting no pass. 
And Dr. James White, you better hope like hell that you are a real Scott. Yeah. I'm betting that you ain't. Um, this is just, I, I got some real quick. Uh, just let me find it. You better quick. hope you like my man, Sean Connery. <laughs> Yeah. Hello, Sean Connery. Israelite. Yeah, he's an Israelite. Sean Connery yeah. is one of us. Yeah. This is uh, real quick. Uh, Nahum one, uh, 1 and 2. The Most High is jealous, and the Lord revengeth. The Lord revengeth and is furious. The Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries, and he reserveth wrath for his enemies. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power, and will not at all acquit the wicked. The Lord hath his way in the whirlwind and in the storm, and the clouds are the dust of his feet. So you're not going to be acquitted, man. Just because you don't accept it don't mean you ain't going to get the ass, ass kicking in your ass. Well, the scripture oh. said, well, it is written, uh, uh, for what if some did not believe? That's right. Shall their unbelief make the faith of the Heavenly Father without effect? Meaning everything the Heavenly Father said, is, is their unbelief going to stop the prophecies? Then it says, God forbid, meaning no. Can I say something real quick? I just want to read this. Uh, this comment, it says, uh, this is Izar, Izara uh, Ban Yahweh Da. It says, elders, I held the day of atonement by myself because I am not in a camp yet. Is that lawful? Of course it is, man. And that's a beautiful thing, man. Yeah. And we applaud, uh, like I'm hard, we applaud <laughs> you, brother. <laughs> yeah, that's faith. That's faith, that's man. Right, that's right. But not, hey, I hope you wasn't sneaking no chocolate chip cookie because i'm gonna say this man <laughs> and last night i had a dream that i was <laughs> keeping yeah. the fast i was eating yeah me too cake and i woke yeah. up so oh shit i'm glad you know yeah and you know at three in the morning my stomach started growling man and yeah. i'm like i don't know if i if i'm gonna make it this year man hey but you know you fight you, you, <laughs> right. you fight it man right. you, know, you got a lot of stories and maybe we'll do a video on that yeah stories yeah. experiences of the day of atonement because some cut. years are good and other years yes. are not too good yeah, yeah, and the man. older you get the harder it the gets harder it is, you man. know yeah, yeah. so you young guys that can't keep it man you, you got problems yeah Con. Con. yeah all right yeah this... i had i had a dream too man <laughs> i thought i was eating and drinking it yeah, the spirits me yeah. demons messing with you, man. Yeah, yeah. The demons never take coffee breaks. No, no. That's what Mo used to always say. Yeah. Go ahead, brother. <laughs> Ezekiel 35 and 1. That's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, we're going to make up for lost time in the kingdom with those women, man. We shun them now, but in the kingdom, we're going to be like. <laughs> We're gonna be drilling them, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna be drilling them. Oh hell yeah. And they're gonna be fine women. Virgins too. They're gonna be they're gonna be fine. Fine. <laughs> like like I'm a man yeah. from England. Yep. This guy. Uh, uh Frank Bruno. Yeah, Frank Bruno. I'm yeah, fine, yeah. Jim. I'm, I'm fine, Jim. Fine. Oh, these women are gonna be fine. They're gonna be proper fine. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, hey, hey, that was them demons, brother. Them, uh, that was the uh, flapjack demons. <laughs> I hop demons. <laughs> demons, hey, demon, I, I hop demons, man. Now, fuck, I, hey, fuck a damn I hop, man. That's that, that ain't no real pancakes, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The real pancakes got it's crispy on the edge, man. Yeah, that's right, that's right, that's right. <laughs> them, eat them white boy pancakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. They hey, got, hey, hey, that, that no smell taste. was coming like this with fingers underneath, you know. Yeah, like in them Bugs Bunny cartoons. Yeah, 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 yeah chili wheel. Con, con. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, this is Ezekiel thirty-five and one, because we we ain't finished with you, Esau. The Lord ain't finished with you by a long, not by a long shot. Ezekiel thirty-five and one. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, <laughs> "Somebody else." <laughs> it says, "Uh, moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man." Set thy face against Mount Seir and prophesy against it. And you know what? It's funny that these devils, they try to say that the Edomites are done away with. But all throughout the scriptures, it speaks about nothing but either Israel or Esau. Because those are the two main stars. Yeah. That's the steak and potatoes of the scriptures. Yeah. The, the wheat is steak and Esau is the potatoes. Con. Yeah, man. So how, why is the Most High going to speak so much about this particular person, but, but they're already done away with? Yeah. And, and still haven't brought the sources out of or when they were destroyed. Yeah, I got a quick precept, if I may. Um, dealing with Esau, Jeremiah 49 and 12. For thus 
saith the Lord, Behold, they whose judgment was not to drink of the cup have assuredly drunken. And that's talking about us. We did drink of that cup. The cup is uh, Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, from the 15th verse to the 68th verse, which, which represents slavery and everything that we went through, hardship. So we drank of that cup. And Esau is the one that gave us that cup. And art thou he that shall altogether go and punish? That's talking about you, Esau, Edom. Thou shall not go and punish, but thou shall surely drink of it. Yeah. All right? So you're going to drink of that cup, man. The same cup that we drank of, you're going to drink of it and worse. Because there's a scripture where it says you're going to drink the dregs of the cup. So that's the when you wring out, the, you know, when it closes wet. And you think it's dry, but then when you wring it out, there's more so coming out. Left, yeah. They're going to drink. So they're <laughs> You're going to drink and swallow it down like it says in Obadiah. You ain't, you ain't going to you ain't gonna get away from it. That's why the Lord is, is stirring up these things, man. You know, you're trying to, uh, uh, take, uh, um, try to take slavery out, out of the, uh, out of the uh, history books. You're trying to make it seem like, like the so-called Negroes came to this uh, land, you know, for better opportunities and all that back then. But, but the Lord is stirring this stuff up in our land for better opportunities <laughs> better opportunities for us we're gonna, we're gonna work you devil we're gonna work that sucker to death and I, I got one more precept yeah right that's that's the old tune work that sucker to death um isaiah 24 and 21 it says uh because the first crop of slaves among esau is going to be those bankers i'm talking about the rothschilds the rockefellers the top banking families and they're literally, literally going to be thrown in a pit. I'm going to read it right here. Isaiah 24 and 21. And it shall come to pass in that day, this is a future prophecy, that the Lord shall punish the host of the high ones that are on high. That's, your, that's the bankers of Esau, Edom. They're the high ones right now. And the kings of the earth upon the earth. And they're, they're the kings. Like the so-called British royal family. You know, they're among that group. Okay. The so-called Queen Mum, you know, uh, Elon Rothschild, Jacob Rothschild, Benjamin Rothschild, all right? Uh, who else? Uh, Lord Mountbatten, who's married to the Queen Mum, which is a relative of the Rothschild, Lord Mountbatten, okay? The other international families, which the Rockefellers are nothing but American counterparts of the Rothschilds, Rothschild. the, the, the European Rothschilds, because they changed their yep. name. The Oppenheimers. The Oppenheimers, which is still, yep, Vanderbilts. Yep. That's right. Uh, reading on, they're the high ones on high. And they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit. So they're going to survive that nuclear destruction only to fulfill uh, Psalm 149. Uh, 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 how's it go to... Uh, uh, help me out here to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron them the judgment written right. this honor have all his saints praise ye the about? lord when was that fulfilled dr james white thank you um, um what happened may, may, may i finish it okay let me just oh, read oh, i'm sorry i'm sorry bro. i'll let you go Kind. uh brother asked in the spirit of yahweh is his name how do i come to see the camp in dc so I, I, it's obvious he must be staying in D.C. Just get in contact one of the uh, uh, GMS camps down in D.C. on YouTube and just ask them when y'all go out and where y'all going to be. And they'll tell you, all right? That's right. Yeah, brothers, bro, one of the brothers or a couple of them may be in the comment board now that could give you directions where to go. Right. Yeah. Reading on, it says, And they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit. And shall be shut. And when it says pit, it's a literal pit, a, a hole dug in the earth that we're going to grab them and chain them and throw them in that hole, literally. All right. And they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit. And who I'm talking about is, is these top banking families and, and shall be shut up in prison or in the prison because they like to put our people in prison. And after many days shall they be visited. So that's a future prophecy that's destined to happen. And somebody put in a comment, his name is Cornbread, followed, followed by a series of numbers. And it says uh, Bob Marley equal, equals Esau. Not necessarily. He might be a Jake. Because you have a lot of black Irish back then that look like Edomites. So he may be a Jake. All right. Only time will tell. We'll find out in the kingdom. 
That's giving Esau a lot of credit, man. Bob Marley, man, I, I, I got his greatest hits. I was listening, man. That that dude is an Israelite, man. That's giving Esau too much credit. Esau don't have that much soul. Yeah, that's true. The brother put on there, Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali has uh, Irish ancestry. Irish roots, yeah. You know, but you gonna tell me, I, yeah, he ain't a cracker, man. You shit, but Ali, that's a Jake of, of all Jakes, man. You know, um, you you still reading on that, Pastor Gabor? Okay, all right. So going back to Ezekiel thirty-five and three. And say unto it, uh, thus saith the Lord power, behold, O Mount Seir, I am against thee. Now I was speaking about Mount Seir because that was Esau's you land. This. You listen to Bob Marley do, uh, uh, how's it go, um, uh, Natural Mystic, the, the studio recording of Natural Mystic. You hear him sing that song? As, as soon as that beat come on, that driving beat, and then the song ramps up. It's the, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> man, you feel the power of that song? Then you hear his... Right on time. Right on time. Right on time. Right ain't on no time. Edomite, that man. ain't no Edomite, man. Listen. And it's all, it's all his children are talented musically as Come. well. Ziggy Marley and, yep, yep. St uh, uh, Stephen Marley. That guy is uh, the welcome to Jamrock. That's one of his sons, you know? So, come on, man. That, that ain't no Edomite. You got it, brother. Gun. So, going back to Ezekiel uh, 35 and 3. Yeah, because, you know, these devils, they don't, ha they don't have any creativity. You know, what, what do you think these so-called Jews, all they do is they exploit Jake. They, they have the money, so what they do is they'll, they'll find the talent, they'll exploit the talent, and they'll make money off the talent, and then they'll throw the talent away. That's right. Somebody put Tough Gong, which was Bob Marley's label. Now, he, na he named that label after, it was named after his fighting skills, because he grew up in the streets of Kingston, and he was known for his fight fighting skills. That's a, that's a wild Irishman, man. All right? And uh, um, by the way, he, he, he wrote a song, D Duppy Conqueror. That was because um, when you read the book, To Catch a Fire, that's the autobiography, the life story of Bob Marley in that book. And he spoke about how he, the demons would plague him and he would fight him in his mind. So that's why he called himself Duppy Conqueror. All right. So there's stories behind his songs, you know. So he was a Jake, man. You got it, brother. OK, so back in Ezekiel 35 and 3. It says, and say unto it, thus saith the Lord power, behold, O Mount Seir, I am against thee, and I will stretch out mine hand against thee, and I will make thee most desolate. So it's talking about the people, you know? It ain't talking about the actual mountain of Mount Esau, because you still got uh, uh, stuff down in Mount Esau today. You still have uh, uh, people that live in, the, in those areas. It says, I will lay thy cities waste, and thou shalt be desolate, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord, Yahweh, because thou has had a perpetual hatred. So this hatred goes back to the womb. You know, before the children were even born, you had this perpetual hatred. You had this anger in you against us. There was always a, a fight, a battle. That's why when Jakes get around Esau, even though they may hang out with each other, there's always that tension, that tension. you know? And eventually that tension erupts. Why? Because we were never meant to link up with each other. It says, uh, because thou has had a perpetual hatred, and you remember all the things that happened in the past, you know, all the, all the times when you were in slavery under, under us, and all of that, you, you remember those things. You remember, uh, and even though he, he got simple later on, you remember King Amaziah throwing your ass off of mountains, watching you splat at the bottom of, you know, at, at the, bottom of, of the rocks. We're going to do that in the kingdom to these devils. Yep. You know, when the bankers, we're going to do that. To, one day they'll have a day in the kingdom, we'll take them to that top of the hill, the mountain and push them off and go yeah <laughs> as they're falling down we'll we'll, we'll clap yeah you see, you see the head on that one come apart oh look at the leg it just busts white oh man uh, isaiah 33 and 18 thou, thine heart shall meditate terror yeah. so <laughs> oh, uh, oh, damn. oh uh blake griffin yeah blake griffin it says, I will lay thy cities waste, and thou shalt be desolate, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord, because thou hast had a perpetual hatred, and has shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword. A perpetual hatred. Yep. To this day, these devils still hate us, man. They're never going to love you. You, you so-called Negroes, you just don't get it. The so-called white man will never love you, because there's the perpetual hatred. And the Heavenly Father put it there, the division there. You got it, brother. Right. It says, and has shed the blood of the children of Israel by the sword of the fort, uh, 
by the force of the sword. That's all right. Stammering lips. <laughs> Stammering <Yeah>. lips. <laughs> hey, you notice when we're speaking, right? Uh, we be tripping over our words. Because you know why? Because of that because of that passion, man. Hey, I want to show y'all something. That's Blake Griffin's uh, 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 son. Yeah. You know what I mean? They have the kinky hair. Cameron, Griffin, Sports Cameron, Griffin. Looks just like a damn white boy, man. But you, hair and all that. you can see the spirit on him. He's a Jake. You can see it in his you face. Got a, hey, you got a lot of Jakes out there that look like, like crackers. Blonde hair, blue-eyed blue Jakes. So y'all got to come out of that spirit, man. You're going to have Jake looking like everybody. Give me Speckled Bird and Jeremiah. Somebody yes, put yeah, yeah. Blake Griffin as a corny-ass Edomite. Well, that shows you're not spiritual, man. You know what? That's all right. That's all right. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's okay. You, you say. can say whatever you say. Yeah, I guess you need some attention in your life. <laughs> Go ahead, bro. Uh, what is that? <laughs> Jeremiah 12. Yeah, Jeremiah 12 and 9. My inheritance is unto me as a speckled bird. The birds uh, round about are against her. Come ye assemble all the beasts of the field. Come to devour. The word speckled for speckled bird, uh, when you go to the Hebrew, the, the uh, definition is variegated. And the word variegated means many different colors. You know, so because you have a, 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 um, a variety of colors that Israel comes in. You know, the, mo the most high is a, is a power of variety, man. You know, so you're going to have Jake's that look like like that little boy that just showed you. He looked like a white boy. If you didn't know who his father was and, and they said that that was such and such father, some great singer, you'd be like, oh, that guy is an Edomite. You know why? Because look at his father. No, you know, you got to learn how to read the spirit, man. All right. So. Oh, yeah. Um, I had a precept because uh, you, you made a, um, uh, Apostle Ramlab, you made a statement about There'll always be that tension, that division. Yeah, yeah. Now, even in this parable that Yahweh Shai taught, it uh, exemplifies that. Uh, the book of Luke 16, and uh, let's see, Luke uh, 16, and, and uh, I want to go right to the point, 25. But Abraham said, son, now this is a parable about the rich man and Lazarus. Now, the rich man represents Esau, Edom. Lazarus represents us, the Israelites. But Abraham said, son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things. That's Esau. Right now, they're getting the goodies, all right? Especially those bankers. They are living fat, man. They know what it means to live. And likewise, Lazarus, evil things. We're getting, we're getting the bottom. We're at the bottom of the, of, the, of, the, of the barrel, so to speak. But now he is comforted. That means in the kingdom. And thou art tormented. So now the bankers, we read about their torment beginning with that pit. Hey, when we grab them up and chain them up and throw them in that pit, that's the beginning of their torments. Yeah. All right? And it ain't going to stop. And their clothes are going to be tattered and torn. Oh, man, they're going to look horrible. Yeah. Okay? We're they're talking... going to wear them fancy $1,000, $2,000, $3,000 suits. Yeah, like you see Elon Rothschild wearing now. Yeah. You know, and he's always smiling. I wonder why Elon Rothschild always smiles. Yeah, probably got like three, four, five hundred dollars $500 shirts on. Because he's living fat every day. Like the scriptures say, he fares sumptuously every day. That's in the parable. And beside all this, between us, here it comes, and beside all this, now this is Abraham speaking to, uh, um, Abraham is speaking to the, the, the rich man yep. who's, who's now in slavery. And beside all this, between us and you, <laughs> there is a great gulf fixed. Now, when you look up that word gulf, it means separation, all right? It means separation. Be between us and you, there's a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot. Mm. Neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. So there's no way that an Edomite is going to slip through the cracks to, to Israel, or an Israelite slip through the cracks to Edom, right. all right? Uh, Elder Ricard of the GOCC there. He was going, to, he, he, yeah, man. He was going to some scriptures talking about 
you know, he went into uh, what is that? Amos, uh, Amos, uh, what is that? The nine and twelve. That there's gonna that remnant is a group of Edomites is gonna. Brother, brother, please, man, please. Nigga, please. You work for UPS. <laughs> yeah, that's why he's now. Now his new gimmick is what? Trying to sound like the new uh, Teddy Pendergrass, man. You know that's his new gimmick, his new shtick. Go ahead, you got it, brother. Okay, uh, going back to Ezekiel thirty-five and five, because I has had a perpetual hatred and has shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword. That happened back then. Is happening. It happened now, and it's even happening to this day. In the time of their calamity, in the time that their iniquity had an end, you know, and even like today, allegedly or supposedly, they're supposed to have freed the slaves with the Emancipation Proclamation, but they were still lynching Jake, you know. Therefore, when you explain the Emancipation Proclamation, God. the emancip to be emancipated means to uh, to be transferred from one slave master to another. God. That's what emancipation means. Yep. And that's exactly what happened. Jake came off Master Charlie's plantation and went to Master Rothschild's <laughs> plantation. The U.S. government. Khan, that's what happened. Khan, that's why I said allegedly, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, supposedly had freedom from slavery. Yeah, because Jake had Emancipation Proclamation. That the average Jake, see the white man, they freed us. They never freed you, man. Khan. If anything, if, if they freed you, you would know who you are. Exactly. You you still don't know who the hell you are. You're still trying to figure out who the hell you are, man. Uh, all right. It says, therefore, as I live, say of the Lord power, I will prepare thee unto blood. And blood shall pursue thee. Since thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. Because that you, you, you eat them, man. You're going to man. You're going to look like hell in the kingdom, man. You're going to be all bloodied up, dirty. Beaten down, black eye, missing eye, missing nose, missing teeth, missing limbs. Well, it says even their widows won't, won't, wanna, won't want to want their men, won't want to sleep with their men, which means we'll have to have breeding farms, you know, <laughs> to breed more slaves. <laughs> you got it, brother. Con. It says, Thou wilt, thus will I make Mount Seir most desolate and cut off from it. Him that passeth out and him that returneth. And I will fill his mountains with his uh, slain uh, men in thy hills and in thy valleys and in all thy rivers. And they shall and they uh, and shall they fall that are slain with the sword. And that hasn't happened yet. That's going to happen. I got a um, Yeah, because I made him. Uh, I made a statement about even his widows or me or his women won't desire him in the kingdom. That's talking about the so-called white man when he goes into slavery. This is the book of Job 27, 14 to 15. If his children be multiplied, it is for the sword, and his offspring shall not be satisfied with bread. Those that remain of him shall be buried in death, and his widows shall not weep. Yeah. So, so even in the kingdom, like just like now, the so-called black woman, she looks down at the so-called black man, well, in the kingdom, the so-called white woman is going to look down on her so-called man. <laughs> yeah, now this is uh, to prove to you that you're still in slavery, right? All you niggas in the prison system, you know, for the littlest crime, you do that. You do that long. You do that long bit, right? There's Amendment 13 of the Constitution. It said neither slavery nor involuntary servitude, except as a punishment for crime. See, they slipped that in there. That's why. These prison systems, these uh, the federal prison system, it filled up with Jake, man. They put your ass back in slavery. That's slavery. It said neither slavery nor nor involuntary servitude, except as a punishment for crime. Meaning, if you commit a crime, they can put your ass in slavery. Wherefore the a party shall have been duly convicted, shall shall exist within the United States or any place subject to their jurisdiction. Uh, Section 2, Congress shall have power to enforce this article by appropriate legislation. Okay, this is Amendment 14. All persons born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction that slavery thereof are citizens of the United States 
and of the state wherein they reside. No state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privilege or uh, immunities of citizens of the United States, nor shall any state deprive any person of life. And that's what happens. That, that's, that happens almost every day when them cops blow you, blow Jake away. They de deprive in your life. Uh, they deprive in your life, man. Liberty or property without without due process of law. So Esau does that, and then if they 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 uh let Esau go because it's justified. But then if you notice, the parent, the, the 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 loved ones of that person, they'll give them a couple million dollars. You know why? Because they did break the constitution, even if they did it by mistake. So you're still slaves up in here, man. And that's why these guys in the black conscious community, and I asked them when they used to come down there, I said, since you're so proud about Africa, why don't you go back to Africa? I, had they been talking about going back to Africa? They ain't going, they ain't planning on going back to Africa. The closest they come to Africa is, is, is taking a trip over there, man. You don't even go to an African restaurant. You got African restaurants. They know what to order, man. They go to a diner. They don't get going to the, they go to a diner. Yeah, they used man. to go to Pam Pam. Yeah, you don't see them niggas in the African restaurant. Man, they go to Kentucky. They go to yeah. uh, they go to Kansas Fried Chicken. Man. Yeah, yeah, Popeye. They go to the dope bodega. They ain't go to no African restaurant. Yeah. They wouldn't know what to order. Yeah, man, they want that Louisiana. <laughs> and they'll, they'll order uh, curry aardvark. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is it? Them niggas don't even go to African rest. Man, you got them up in you got them in uh, uh, the Bronx. You got them in Harlem. Them African restaurants. You don't see no niggas walking in there. Like uh, Elder Apostle Hard said, they wouldn't know what the hell to order, but they screaming they, they some damn African barbecued aardvarks. Now, go ahead, this brother. This is uh, get into your yeah. con con. <laughs> Hey, you know, you stumble over words you can't think right because of that fast, man. It dehydrates your brain and your, your organs, man. I can feel it. We're running on the spirit. That's it. That's it. That's it. Ooh, that's, step aside. Oh, that, that, that proves the spirit is greater than, 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 huh. than the flesh. Yeah, because Yahweh Shai did it for 40 days and 40 nights. Yeah, man. Shows you how weak we are. Yeah. Yeah, but that's the system that he was in. Yeah, See, this yeah. system is so messed up. Con, con. Man, you, you 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 don't eat for like three four hours. You ready to drop dead? That's right. That's right. Uh, Genesis four and thirteen, and Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth. And oh, now he's bearing his punishment now, though. He's the hunk of the earth. Yep. You go back in the time machine. You take the white man back in the time machine. <laughs> back then, nations would want to kill him, man. Destroy him just, just on the way he looks. But now, he, he's the hunk of the earth now. Go ahead, brother. Yeah, it says, um, it says, and from that, uh, read that again. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and, thou, and from thy face shall I be hid. And I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth. And that's the reason why these devils don't pay, especially them so-called Jews. We were watching that movie War Dogs. So like it for you brothers that haven't watched the movie yet. I don't want to uh, just spoil it for you. But in that movie, you, there, was, there was these two so-called Jews and they pretty much were ripping people off. They were doing underhanded shit and they ripped people off. And at the end of the movie, when they finally got caught, one of the so-called Jews did four years in federal prison and the other one did seven months uh, uh, house arrest. Why? Because they're a fugitive and a vagabond. And, and if and if they had if they would have uh, uh, kissed the right ass and paid the right amount money to to the right person, they would have did no time. Like uh, Chelsea Clinton, whatever she do, she'll get off scot free, man. You know. That's right. That's yeah, right. The so-called Jews, they're on the court system. They own every damn thing, man. Yeah. And so they're fugitive and vag vagabonds, and they're also mercenaries, uh, 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 guns for hire. You know, that's why they call Cain. The word Cain is from the Hebrew word Koyan, which means a stabbing weapon, you know. And then Tubal Cain means a traveling weapon. And that's where you get your mercenaries from. I was watching this uh, uh, documentary on YouTube and, and pretty much as mercenaries for hire and pretty much as these private contracting companies that go out there to protect 
the assets, you know, the people that they hire them and they, they, they shoot and kill people. They, they, they even involved in IEDs and certain explosions and they got, they have their snipers and their weapons and all that. And they go out there, man, for, for money. And they said they'll make a whole lot more money doing that than if they were in the regular military. Or the CIA jackals. Yep. There's a one video on YouTube, the guy, um, economic terrorist. Yep. He explained how economic first hitman. they'll send the economic hitmen yep. to a country. And if the country don't bow down to their will, yep. then they send in the jackals. Yep. And the jackals stir up shit, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, it's a real revealing in, uh, uh, interview. Yep. Hey, so there's a lot of wickedness that these devils have done that, that's been swept under the rug. <laughs> but but the Lord the Lord sees though the Lord knows what's going on. And he sees all about, that wickedness. Con and the thing about a fugitive is eventually he gets caught yep, yep. And, and, and pays for his crime. He can run for 20, 30 years, but eventually he's gonna get caught and br brought to justice. And that's the so-called white man. He's a fugitive from yep. justice, but eventually he's gonna get caught, beginning with right. their bankers. And brought to justice, yeah. true justice. And the Most High, Yahweh Bashem Shai, is hot on your trail. And we're going to be the judges, just like Yahweh Shai said when he said to the apostles, "I will make you uh, judges." Uh, Ma Matthew 19 and 27, yeah. and ye shall judge the house of Israel. Yeah. Now, if we're going, if they're going to judge the house of Israel, how much more the other nations? Yeah. So, <laughs> you got it, brother. That's right. This is our Job chapter 20, verse three. I have heard the check of my reproach. And the spirit of my understanding causeth me to answer. Knowest thou not this of old, since man was placed upon earth, that the triumphing of the wicked is short, and the joy of the hypocrite but for a moment? Yeah, this is their triumph, and this the so-called world. This is their joy, but it's only for a moment. And slowly but surely, that moment is slipping away from, from them. And they know it, man. They know it. Yeah, big things going to happen in 2017, and big things have happened all this year, man, and things are going to escalate, you know? Anyway, we're getting ready to close up. Um, we hope you all learned um, something, and, um, you know, uh, bless you brothers that are keeping that uh, Day of Atonement, man. We got a couple hours left. Well, for some of y'all, it would be uh, depending on if you're in the West or in, in the Midwest or whatever, You'll be breaking your your fast sooner than we are. We'll be the last ones to break break the the, the fast. It'll be about what seven thirteen, seven fourteen, around there when we start breaking the fast. And when you break that fast, you don't eat no, you know, you don't go to Burger King and eat three whoppers, man. What you do is you get some spring water, good spring water, and you drip sip on it. You know, you might even get some tea, and you might get some fruit. You know, like watermelon or something like watermelon with seeds in it, cantaloupe, and you eat on that, and you you, you might even have some soup, and you're preparing your body, you know, because you're you're breaking the fast. You don't want to overwhelm your system, you know. You got to be. It's about being disciplined, man. You know. Anyway, with that, we're gonna say uh, shalom. Next time we see y'all, we'll we'll be eating. <laughs> I'm thinking about food. Not really. You know, I'm dealing with it. Anyway, I'm going to say uh, shalom.